Chapter 5. A Layer Cake of Rock The Grand Canyon is located in a 130,000 square mile region called the Colorado Plateau. The plateau covers northern Arizona, southern Utah, the southwest corner of Colorado, and part of northwest New Mexico. It also contains 10 national parks, including Grand Canyon. Most of the plateau consists of thousands of layers of sedimentary rock formed when ancient oceans covered the area. When the oceans disappeared, the plateau remained. So how was the Grand Canyon made? The simple answer is erosion from the river. For millions of years, the Colorado River cut its way through many layers of different rock. Little by little, the river sliced into the land a slice that is nearly 300 miles long and over a mile deep. Erosion from the Colorado River, however, is not the only reason the canyon exists. The desert terrain of the southwest does not encourage plant growth. Without plants and their root systems to hold soil, more erosion occurs. Although the southwest has an arid or dry climate, it does rain and snow at the canyon at times. And when it does, the storms are violent. Rainfall is hard and that this speeds erosion too. The yearly winter rains run down the canyon walls and wash sand, pebbles, rocks, and boulders into the gorge. Winter rains also collect in cracks in the canyon walls and freeze. Water expands when it freezes, making the cracks wider. Finally, the rock breaks off from the canyon wall and crashes to the bottom. Rainwater erosion also washes away softer layers of rock that have supported harder rock. The harder rock loosens and eventually falls in down into the canyon. Wind has also played a part in shaping the canyon. Many of the mesas and buttes that are so amazing to see were, were formed by millions of years to, of wind brushing tiny bits of rock away one bit at a time. Mesas and buttes. A mesa is a flat topped hill or mountain with very steep sides. It is always wider than it is tall. The word mesa means table in Spanish. Buttes are smaller than mesas. They are taller than they are wide. Both mesas and buttes are found throughout the southwestern United States. Because of all the erosion, visitors to the Grand Canyon today can see at least 11 different layers of rock. These layers lie one right on top of another like a layer of cake. The oldest rocks are the bottom layer, and the youngest, the top. The oldest rock is called the Vishnu Schist. It is 1.7 billion years old and mostly black in color. The next oldest layer consists of pink, sedimentary, and igneous rock. It is between 800 million and 1.2 billion years old. On top of the pink rock, is a layer called the Tapetes sandstone. It is packed with fossilized sponges and other sea creatures. These are proof that an ocean covered the area 545 million years ago. On top of that layer is shale. It's blue gray in color and is 515 million years old. The shale is topped by limestone containing tiny bits of shells. Again, this is evidence of another prehistoric ocean. The next layer, the Temple Butte Formation, which is a purplish limestone, also has many marine fossils. At this point, the canyon walls become much steeper. The next layer, which consists of more limestone, is 800 feet high and was formed 340 million years ago. Although it is mainly silver gray, Iron oxide in the rocks has stained parts a deep red. 
Topping this thick layer is a mix of sandstone, shale, and siltstone. In it are fossils of insects and ferns. Just above that is more shale, and then sandstone formed from dunes of a desert that covered the plateau 275 million years ago. It, in turn, is covered by the darker yellow-gray Toro Weep formation made of gypsum and shale and some sandstone. The very top layer of the plateau is cream-colored limestone. In his journal, John Wesley Powell often wrote about the amazing rock formations and layers of rocks that he and his group passed by. Most of his observations were precise and written in scientific language, but occasionally his writing becomes poetic. When he came upon beds of lava, he wrote, what a conflict of water and fire there must have been here. Just imagine a river of molten rock running down into a river of melted snow. What a seething and boiling of the waters. What clouds of steam rolled into the heavens. What's in a name? The Grand Canyon has thousands of rock masterpieces, and many of the most famous ones have names. Some are named after explorers, like Powell Point and Cardenas Butte. Many are named after Native American tribes, Hopi Point, Pima Point, Yavapai Point, Coconino Plateau, Comanche Point, and Navajo Point. There are also names from ancient Egypt, like Osiris Temple and Isis Temple, and a whole group take their names from the legends of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Lancelot Point, Guinevere Castle, Gawain Abyss, Galahad Point, King Arthur Castle, and Holy Grail Temple.